Coming to you from the DMV, DMV. by the way of the 703. Northern VA is that, and resting to be exact. I go by the name One Shot Mike and One Shot Enterprise. So this is what this is, y'all. We all have different perspectives in which we view the world. What I'ma do is bring you closer to the people and the issues that interest me. Y'all let me know who or what y'all want to see next. Before I take you anywhere, I always break down my reasons for each interview. And when we get there, I hit them with a few questions, get a few answers, get their perspective on a few things, and if it's an artist, might even get them to spit a verse or two. Whatever we do, the goal is to bring you my perspective of a real view. Alright, now let's get into it. One shot. Today is all about my man. Real of you. What's happening, y'all? Boy, one shot, Mike. Right back here at the barber shop. You know what I'm saying? New spot, new venture, but it's a real of you. Same thing. Right here is all about KG Cuts. We about to check out how, many, how long they've been here. They've been here for some years. We're gonna get some info on the, on the barbershop and about sovereign citizens and Moors of America. So we're gonna talk about a few things and get this wrapped up. Let's go. Got my man Keith right here. Keith the KG, the K and the G right here represents. We're gonna get we're gonna get some info and get some details down. You know this is brother Black right here representing, getting his cut down right here. We ain't get this footage in. I got another barber right here, my man Earl. Another oh, barber shot holding it down right here. We got, we got my man Jerry right here. How you doing, Jerry? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So we're going to get to the details of how they got started and, and, and how this all came about. All right, let's go. What's happening, y'all? It's your boy One Shot. We up in here. It's a real view. I got my partners here. I just introduced y'all to. We're going to walk, make our way over here and talk to. The originator and the owner of the shop right here. <laughs> My man, Mr. Keith, go ahead and break it down. So I'm hit you with a few questions just to get the history of it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So so when did y'all actually move into this location here? In 99. 99? 99. Okay. okay. I remember when y'all were in, uh, in Herndon, that was over there off of... Uh, perfection. Yeah, it was perfection and all that. Perfection. So did you own that shop over there too? No, oh, okay. I was just working there. Yeah, so this was when you was bringing out and making your own and getting it. Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So, are these the, the original cutters from the original uh, days of 99? Right. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah. I knew, but I wanted to get it on yeah. camera. Yeah. I've been here since 99. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Definitely, man. But I was just going to scoot over here and just let my man get some shots. I heard you came here in 98. Oh, okay. 98. But the owner, he couldn't make it back and forth from Fredericksburg. You know, because he's getting older. So, yeah. So, he sold it to me, and that's what I should do in 99, so, so when, that, when that took place back in, uh, you said, okay, so 98 into 99, I was here in 98, he was here in 98, oh, already cutting over. hair, and then you he took over in 99, yeah. okay, okay, yeah, so about the name, so you got the name change in 99 and all that too, that's when mm -hmm. you took it was over, Chaz at first, it was Chaz, Chaz. Oh, okay, first. see, that's his job, I didn't even know that, yeah. all the people been coming here for years probably didn't yeah, know that, Chaz. Cause his name was Chad. His original name was Chad. Chad. Okay. All right. So just to break down where here is, I, I got ahead of myself. We're here in Reston, Virginia, by way of the DMV. If y'all don't know, from wherever you at, to here. You know what I'm saying? We bring y'all into the barbershop, giving y'all the history of the barbershop right here and a little bit of info. So I know y'all got pictures all over the the history of the shop. You catch that right there. Right here, I got my man. Grant Hill from where he get his cuts here. We're going to have to ask, ask him a little bit about that. You know what I'm saying? So I saw you just recently had him in the shop here a couple of days ago. You know what I'm saying? When was that? Last Saturday. Last Saturday, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. When did y'all actually get to know each other from the beginning? Grant? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, he played with my younger brother from Little League all the way up. Oh, okay. To high school. Yeah. Until they went to college, but they separated. Oh, okay. But they were best friends. Yeah. All through high school. And what's Taylor your little school. brother's name? Before? Mike Taylor. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Represent, man. Yeah, because yeah. I know there's a lot of balls out here and rested here. You got to mm -hmm. put it down for him. That's all right. Yeah, that's my younger brother, Mike. Yeah, yeah. So, 
as with all the changes in wrestling and the, and the diversity of, you know what I'm saying, the area, have you found it to be a, 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 a plus to your business or sure. you know what, I'm what do you feel like, sure. like the area is to your business? Yeah, it's good. It helps out a lot for everyone. Yeah. We get all kinds of nationalities to come in and get a haircut. That's good. All right, Jerry, what's going peace, on peace, with you, man? Peace, 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 so how long you been cutting, man? Since 99 here, too? 95. Yeah. I started oh, okay. in, like, 95. Uh, yeah. Uh, over in the Nova Chop, over in the Hermit. Yeah. I've been here since, uh, 96, 97. Yeah, that's what's up, man. What's up, Jerry? Yeah, you ain't going nowhere since. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. That's a, people love to know that they can come back to their trusty barbers, and no one, right. you know. Hey, it's like... Maybe 70 years experience in here. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. I know that's right. So I definitely was like, okay, we got to talk about, you know, what this place is to the area, you know what I mean? Because people mainstay, leave. Man. Yeah, mainstay, mainstay, right? Yeah. People move away and come back, yeah. and the first place they got to make it back to. And some young ones in here that come through here and is cutting since they was babies. Oh, man. Watch them grow up. Now they grown men out here. I right. know that's all right. right here. Yeah, that's all right, man. So, I mean, from the good to the bad, for people leaving for good reasons and leaving for the other reasons, this is the spot to come back to. Right. I always notice that, man. It's just like people got to make it back to the, the KG. That's all right. So, a little history about Lake Ann and, and wrestling itself. Like, tell me a little bit about uh, this spot right here and where we at. Lake um, as far as Lake Ann? Yeah, yeah, just like. This is the first place built actually in wrestling. 1964, 65, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, the first, the first ran to the spot. The first original actually. place built. This is yeah. a historic, historical first area. Yeah, they actually so just put really those signs. You really can't change anything yeah. out here. Everything you see is original. So, as far as they go. Yeah, that's all right, right there. So I definitely wanted to cover both sides, y'all being the mainstay and this this place being what it is. But now that we over here, I want to break down a little bit of information. Well, I'll let y'all break down some information about the uh, Moore's identity, I guess it is, or, or understanding. I'm going to let you break that down. So if, if we was just to start at the top, you know what I mean, what, what would you explain to somebody who didn't know anything about uh, what a Moore is or who a Moore is? More by definition terms, any dark skinned person. So it could be any, any any one of them in here. We're all Moors, you know, we're in Morocco. Also known America. Al Morocco. Okay, right. okay. American flag sitting here. So he gonna catch that. So basically, and, and we got a big flag hanging up over here. Yeah, that's it right there. So give us a little history of that flag right there. Well, that flag, that flag has been flying on this land for 10,000 years or more, from my understanding, from my research and my teachings. So what happened to it was George Washington took it down. When they, when they came over here, they saw, you know, we already had our government, everything established, the Moors. So... The story about the flag is the, the cherry tree. George Washington chopped down the cherry tree. That's real. Right? It's a red, red flag with the green star in the center. Represents the cherry tree, the red and the green. So the story that George Washington chopped down a cherry tree is a fairy tale. Which actually, what he did was took our flag down and overthrew our government. That's crazy, because it's always like they made sure that we knew that he chopped down some yeah. cherry tree. And it was like, what what in the big scheme of things was the relevance of this information? And they made sure that we know that. So you think that was kind of like to to keep that part, you know, hidden but in plain sight? It's basically, what it boils down to is birthright theft. Stole our birthright. They overthrew our government. Called us different nationalities, which are not nationalities. Every 30 years it changes. We're from black, right. Negro, African-American, colored, 
What's next? Ain't but one thing left. That's Moors, brother. We all Moors. I know you, you know, so that people can look this information up for themselves. I know you had, you know, the book when you were telling me that with the different type of dictionary that Black Law. Yeah. Okay. Fourth First, edition. Yeah. You can also check out RV Bay Publications. Uh, okay. Other information on this. Uh, RV Bay. RV Bay Publications. Okay. RV Bay Publications. Yeah. Yeah. Mantis yeah. Views on YouTube. Mantis Views. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Can Land Moors. Okay. I know uh, that uh, brother you directed me brother to. Brother Cujo. And uh, Taj Three Bay. Taj Three Bay. Cujo, I'm Bay. Sorry. Definitely. So they can they can help people understand more if they want to you know research more and get a real understanding of identity and the sovereign citizenship. In order to have to be sovereign, yeah. you got to have a nationality. Okay. They, they go hand in hand. Without either one, you know, you got to have a nationality to be sovereign. Okay. So yeah, so no, so we're not sovereign citizens. Oh, okay. Oh, you know okay. We have nationality. Yeah. yeah. So that goes hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. Understood. So the nationality is, is more American. More American. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can't be sovereign without a nationality. Got it. So first you have to claim yeah. your nationality. See, sovereign citizens, that's for the Europeans. Oh, is that right? Uh, okay. I, I heard yeah. you talking about it. As, that's that's misrepresenting us. us. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Sovereign citizen is an oxymoron. That's what a nationality card look like. All right. So tell us about that right there, what we're looking at. This is basically a Lodial American National Identification Card. It comes from rvbaypublications.com. You can read it, see what it says on it. It never expires. Mm. You can get it real close at the bottom right here. I think on this side, what it say? Oh, it says not tax. That's right. Oh, okay. Hold on. Is that, we don't pay. We tax? don't pay taxes on our own land. Never have. Never will. Sales tax, property tax, whatever. This is for this is this is for your nationality card. Where can we find that? Student card and your right to travel card. RVBayPublications.com. Bay. All right, we'll put that up against the bottom of the screen. Well, I definitely, man, I want to appreciate y'all for taking this moment with Peace, me and schooling us and giving us some more. info. We all more. We all more, the brother say. I know he, he low-key with the Bobby here, Earl, holding it down, doing his thing. Appreciate you, man. Thanks glad. for having us, definitely. I want to say, man, appreciate you having us, man. Definitely good looking out. Come through if y'all have a recipe you need a haircut. Come check us out. All right, y'all have a recipe you need a haircut. Y'all have a recipe, come check us out. You know what I'm saying? It's right here. Right here, we got everybody in the barbershop. I just want to say appreciate y'all. This legendary right here. Yeah, it's going down. My man Flag, I appreciate that, man. It's legendary. Let me shout out. Let me shout out my man's clothing line. This right here is, is uh, with Kings of Wisdom clothing line by Brian Smith, representing down there in Atlanta, Georgia, but from wrestling. So we're going to keep promoting this thing right here. So y'all check out the Kings of Wisdom. All right, we appreciate y'all checking us. is recognized to have it right of inheritance even to self and or property is the honor of your mothers and fathers and the ancient traditions and customs of your ancient ones is uh, supposed to be recognized by you and you are to be capable of regurgitating it in both thought and action and if you're not you are declared a stateless person and in law such persons are referred to as colored our people think that means Afrocentricity. In law, it means artificial person. And an artificial person comes under the 14th Amendment as a corpse. What is known as a corporation, which is civil little more to dead in the view of the law, having no rights of inheritance whatsoever. And so on this basis of law and civilization, the European colonial operators put their family names on persons of stateless status and branded them crayons, and when they agreed, they gave up their birthright.